Welcome to Unique vs. 777, round one of the Real Crown Tournament. At least 300 euros on the line. And we have Cyan playing in the Cyan for once, finally, as the Ethiopians in the green pocket. Bulgarians in the lakes and Teutons on the other flanks for Peon. That seems like quite strong sips. We have three SO sips on that side. Um, Cumans for Shing um, should go ultra aggressive, I assume. I don't know what's this castle start from Cumans. I've never seen that before. Um, along with the market start with the Teutons on the pocket. Okay, Teuton pocket and Portuguese flanks is reasonable um, for low B in the red. But what is this? What? Okay, we also have some stables and some staff lances, but the staff lances are actually defending attacking paladins instead of like sniping peons villages, which is kind of what they're supposed to do. Um. Okay, I cannot read all those puns. They're worse than mine, and that says something. Um. But, but I appreciate them, not nonetheless. Okay, Staff Lance is able to defend. I'm not really sure if that's what they're for. Um, humans against Teutons, I think, should have a really hard time later on. I mean, we, we kind of high had control of this hill. So now we gave it up again. Might get that castle up. Well, we won't. Lakes is on it with some um, pikemen. And yet again, we see a lot of pikemen from the pocket. We saw that yesterday, too. A lot of TCs also coming out. So really early eco here for Lakes. What's happening up north? Not too much. The, um, what is that, Portuguese and Ethiopian should be a bit slower serves, but Sidranja's out here for Cyan, not too many Bombard Cannons I have seen yet, okay, there's one from the Portuguese, and uh, there was a ping here, but I don't see anything there. Your wit is drier than the Sahara? Like, self-ironic puns, that, that's a good one, I can, I can appreciate that. Oh, that's some nice snipes on the SO, even with the hill bonus there for the Cuman player, Mr. Shing. Um, so th this time we don't have names that I have to put in Google Translate, which I'm thankful for. Um, and I can just call them by their names, not by weird English translation of Chinese names. Um, I think they're associated with the Team 666 that we saw yesterday, so well, it will speak that at 666777, very similar logos and uh, our two Chinese teams, I think. Um, yeah, but for the weird stuff, the Cubans are doing quite fine here. That's a hill, that's a gigantic hill in the middle of both these players. Uh, really, it basically starts at the TC of Peon, and it ends at the TC of uh, Xing. So very interesting map here at the south. Um, Peon doing a good job. Ah, these, like, under the hill castles yet again. Um, I mean, I guess that was too ambitious at some point. But I I think you could wait and put that castle there, actually, because they have control now. Seeing the wait start should be possible. Um, Yellow also over here supporting um, Mr. Long. What's happening at the north? Um... No, well, we have some bombard cannons firing at each other. I don't think the game will be decided there in an instant. Well, maybe it might actually be, because that's a contested corner, right? And the corner is right now held by Cyan, so UFK can set up trade here. And um, Peon has this corner. Okay, three corners, and actually trade in all of them for Unique. And, like, no corner. I mean, Long has markets here, but they don't really know where to go, because his teammates haven't gotten any corners. Um, yeah, this is kind of the corner they're supposed to fight for. I guess both of them are. Very interesting map generation, actually. Um, not the biggest fan of casting the aces, because it's just two huge battles and not too much else on the map, but... Um, as a caster, at least. As a player, it's very convenient, right? Um, at least as a flank, you don't have to worry much. But, yeah, it's a very interesting generation with, like... Nobody has saved two corners. I really like that generation. Um, and now we have the Conics swarming in from the lakes. I think they could swing this in favor, but Kipchak should be a really good unit against Conics. 
I assume Paladin's a bit too staying back here and it looks good for uh, Team 777 to take over that hill there. Um, but they kind of need to, right? They need a corner. And right now, it doesn't look like they're getting one anytime soon. Pion now charging up the hill again. <laughs> Costs are not half as ambitious as China's expansion plans. Well, this isn't the Chinese team, right? This is Peon from Canada. The, the Canadians aren't the most expensive nation in the world. They, they like just to sit at home, leave their door open, at least according to Michael Moore, which is actually not true. But, yeah. Canadian cliches, that is. Um, Cyan, on the other hand side, the French are more imperial breed. And they're taking over the, the north side. <coughs> oh, you're Canadian too, Cloud. And yeah, also like the Crepus being added um, on, on both sides. No, not on the south. That's, that's Canada. You, you don't invade that. Um, but, well, I guess. French, Ethiopia. I don't know. No, I'm going for player countries. I'm super confused, but now Yellow's here to help out a bit. Um, Ethiopians versus... I think Ethiopians should have all the tools to deal with Portuguese, actually. I mean, they have Siege Launcher and they have Armor Cannon. Um... And the bombard cannon are also like a bit better, um, but yeah, Portuguese bombard cannons obviously are the best bombard cannons in the game with Arquebus. Uh, now Lung uh, castling the trade here. Um, little does he know that also there's trade here. I mean, maybe he knows, but won't cut off all the trade. Now we see elite Teutonic knights coming in from a pocket player. Okay, he has made a costly here to produce them. Um, are these parents supposed to heal up, or or are they forgotten in there? But now Peon doing the push, taking over the hill. So that looks quite good for Unique, I would say. But in the north, no, oh, no, but in the north, Lex is there to clean up the bombard cannons. So that's also looking quite decent. This castle will go up though, but I think, yeah, markets are coming up here for Cyan. So they will just trade the south side, and then this castle won't really matter that much. Um, unless like Ching and Lobi can secure um, the North one for themselves to trade. They have a trade line from here to here, not the most beautiful one. And I don't think that Ching has any trade. Um, still has, okay, he's adding trade cards. No, that's Lung. Um, I, I need to click on Ching. 19 on gold, and I believe that's villages. Some of them are dying at the front. Um, this is not a bomber tower, so we are safe from having receiving the ban hammer. Somebody has the polar ban hammer. This would be the time. It's really not the time to post the emote. You should not post that emote from polar because this is not a forbidden structure. Don't post that specific emote, please. I was interested to see what's happened, but apparently people are actually listening to me and doing what I'm saying, that's good. Castle falling there as well for Shing, so this looks like a good push. Three. Uh, can we snipe the traps, maybe? Cuban siege engineers not getting. Um, siege engineers, so not the best ones in the game, but at least they get a so. And we do manage to clean up the traps. Kinda unseen, their parents could have stopped that from Peon. But Pion should still feel good. Three gold piles here as well under the control under these uh, Teuton Towers, which are not that featured in DM usually. Um, yeah, markets here have been deleted now, but uh, Lake's still going north there. Not too much army out for Cyan. Wonder what this pop is. Um, this pop is 155. Where, where is this army? Okay, that, that's all he has. Thanks for the follow. Night King! Oh, hey, Night King! Welcome! Yeah. Uh, Casted your games yesterday? I think it was really unfortunate. I think you guys could have won that series. Um, if, like... In the last game, you go to the left side... No, that wasn't the last game. Yeah, I think that the games that you were kind of throwing by not killing that trade were actually the games you won. So, yeah. Maybe not. But you had a really good shot at winning that. I take that Night King has a dark sense of humor. Black Sky? What about Black Sky in that regard? The night could be a bright night, right? But a Black Sky, that's certainly dark. 
Okay, Tudent Castle now also up on that hill, and it has had more ranged than the Tudent Terror. Um, in the north, some progress though for Team 777. Slowly secure in the corner. We have a market there now, so the trade has been prolonged a bit. Going a weird route though. Oh, I love that they're deleting buildings. That's something a lot of people don't do. Um, including myself, actually. But, um, I love that they're deleting buildings to make the trade better, but... Well, uh, that's a lot more buildings to go. <laughs> like, this wasn't the worst part of the trade, right? Oh god, sorry, there's an ambulance going by, I guess. Um, this wasn't the worst part of the trade. Like, the worst part of the trade is here. <laughs> and I feel like 777 losing the game slowly in the south. But, I mean, that's not where that trade is at. But that trade is really short. Uh, yeah, lost trade cards are idle because the markets were made in you here. And actually already in danger against Sea Trap. What's that Sea Trap on LSD or what? Uh, maybe, I don't know if we're supposed to talk about drugs, but... This is certainly taking the wrong things. Uh, and now, well, you could say the drug, the ram was stoned, right? <clears throat> well, comfortably pushing up the hill of Peon in the south. Um, Uh, you wanted to what, the next guy, because your gifts have ended? <laughs> that trade route is sad and short, there's a Napoleon complex, but, but the French team is this one. Like, these guys are French. I guess you can have a Napoleon complex without being Napoleon. Ah, the Polar Benhammer, yeah, it's it's. Yeah, I just wanted to feel good. Right, that's why I said you shouldn't post it. So that actually, I assumed nobody would post it. <laughs> yeah, it would have been interesting if somebody did though. Yeah, Paul hasn't streamed too much lately. It makes sense that not that many people have the email. Um, I might have lost my sub as well, or like stopped my sub, I guess. I'm gonna resub when he's live. Yeah, and, and this is also a very cold oasis generation, and then an ice cold push by Cyan into the base of a lobby there. Siege Rams. I always thought Siege Rams aren't too great against Portuguese, at least in free for alls, because the bomber cannons are that good at taking them down, but we don't see any bomber cannons for lobby. And that now is a scary army of Conics, Arbalus, and a lot of Siege Rams, and the corner under firm control of. Unique again, we only have the sad trade, uh, we have one player of them that doesn't have any trade, we have four on gold for Shing. Who's, who's doing his utmost microing these skip checks, but yeah, indeed, it is GG and Unique do take game number one. Congrats to them, it was a good game, got control of board corners um, early on and never let it slip really. It looked a bit dicey here when most of the hill was controlled by 777, so I think we're still in for a good series. Um, but yeah, well played, too unique. Um, Blake's doing a really nice job at like deciding the fights at the front as well. And uh, yeah, Cyan out till they had the big push ready, Ethiopians kind of the slower sort uh, of suit there. Right, but anyone can have a Napoleon complex. Uh, holy crap post? Yeah, holy crap post indeed. Um, yeah, we, we need thumbnails, right? Let me, let me take a screenshot. Oh, without minimap. Alrighty. Dead in the water. Dead in the unique... No, dead for the 667. Right, but everybody can have a Napoleon Humphrey. Not everybody can have a Polar Band Hammer, though. Um, 7-7 had no chance. Not sure, I think they still have a chance to win another game. 
Um, almost like the youth. <laughs> that should suck it too. Um, they weren't that bad at times. Um, the American women are actually really good. So, yeah. Don't count out the US in soccer. It's only the men that suck. Trade profit a lot by Lobby actually, with the most trade profit. What? They, they, they had only the short trade, right? And Lobby has 11k trade profit. That That's impressive. Belgium uh, beat that soccer team? The men or the women? I mean, Belgium isn't too bad. Um, I guess Belgium, like, in, in men, there have been times that Belgium was much better than US, and there have been times they were at a similar level, I think. But I remember Belgium was also in the like semi-finals of, of uh, Euro and stuff, right? So there were times when Belgium were really, really good in soccer. Um, US men's team will be waiting decades to win anything. I mean, they're, they're not that great. It was like in 1955? No, no, Belgium was really good like four or five years ago. Lobby also with 480 villagers. Um, I mean, that's not villagers, right? A lot of that is trade cards. We can actually check how many trade cards he has. So I'll be interested in that. Um, and I assume it's going to take a while to get the next game going, so we have time for these shenanigans. Uh, 36 trade units only right now. Hmm. Okay, I guess a lot of were killed um, when they went to that market. Yeah, yeah, there's the obelisk there. He must have had way more than that. He can see in the timeline and yeah. Let me check my messages, but I assume it's gonna be a bit. <laughs> Sorry, expect that I posted any screenshots in the graphics team. You probably got a pig. Um, but, but we're great to see you. Um, the, the famous uh, graphic artist of this stream. If you see the beautiful sub badges and the beautiful emotes, that's all him. Don't get shot. I hope to get a vaccination shot though. Um, nobody was betting. Uh, we still have the, um, the... Nobody solved the riddle yet. So... The music's on again. And it'll be 500 muscles for whoever correctly guesses which game this is a soundtrack of. It's a game soundtrack, not a movie soundtrack. Because I think a movie soundtrack would be copyrighted. And a game soundtrack shouldn't be copyrighted on Twitch, because, well, I assume people stream that game. Um, League of Legends is not correct. Thanks for stopping by and thanks for the gift up by the way again. PK Clown, you the must up. Alright, I haven't gotten a new code. I assume it will take a bit. Um so I'm gonna make Ah, uh, we picked wrong map, we rehost. Okay, never mind, they're actually losing forward. I was about to say I'm gonna make myself a coffee, but I guess I'll make myself a coffee after the next one, huh? I think they're moving a bit quicker. I have the feeling they're moving a bit quicker than yesterday. Um, I assume it's also gonna be get quicker um, during the tournament. Because like people figure out the rules and everything. Chad is so much more active today than yesterday. That's fun. I mean, not complaining about the the stream yesterday, the board was great, like, monetary wise. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I really liked, like, PK Clown's puns and everything in the chat. Like, uh, you, you can't really, like, chat is so important, um, for forecasting. Um, not for playing streams, I, I don't know, you, you have a game to concentrate on, right? But, yeah, really, it's important for energy. At least for me. And I feel like for a lot of other casts that I watch as well. Um, for example, Xavier, uh, there's like 
somebody new coming to a chat and, and talking to him, like, his energy level goes... You, you can hear it, you can see it, how it goes up. Um... Because even though, like, there's a number that tells you that some people might be listening to you, you're, you're never really sure. But when they ask you questions, good indicator. And we're into game two! We haven't actually talked about the sills or anything. Um, the bets are open. And the guessing competition will have to wait, so the music's gone. Oh, we actually have uh, spec delay this time. Let me close the window, I think it's a bit loud with the trains. Can mods start ports? They can. Uh, I will do the music louder in the breaks. Um, the next break I'm probably gonna make myself a coffee and then I'll turn the music up real loud so we can have the um, guessing competition on full power. 500 on unique. Yeah, you might have to write it big. I don't know if like the message I activate the message but it didn't register. Ah oh, you don't have that many. <laughs> well that that's a easy explanation. Well, this guy's rich man. Welcome to game two, unique again seven 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 one zero lead for unique. We have uh, Lakes playing as the Koreans and I'm on the wrong map, that's why I can't see anybody. Um as the Korean flank. Uh, Lithuanian pocket this time lyrics. Oh Lithuanian's not banned. I expected Lithuanians to get banned a lot, but I haven't looked at the sieves. Um and we know that Lyrics loves Lithuanians, so that should be really really troublesome for the opposition here. Also, Pion, Lurks, and Lakes, probably strongest team that you need can field. Um, Pion, Teutons on the other flank, and then we have Fall, a player that we haven't seen before in this series. Is that Fall or Fai? I think that might be in... Oh, it's Far 1? Maybe it's a Roman 1? I don't know. Let's call him Far. That sounds more fun. Koreans as well. And uh, Pocket Mayans, yeah, yeah. We haven't seen that doing too great yesterday. Um, Ching with the Mongols on the flank can die early, but we have a palantir. Uh, Koreans can't really kill early. Yeah, okay. Lyrics trying to go for the Mongols, but has enough camels out. Four stables up. Archery ranges, okay, for some quick CA. Bit doubtful by that. I think Mangana Edge is better. A lot of people betting on Unique. No, it's actually only Expector. Just expected with a thousand attempts to bet on Unique. Hmm, some rush here by far. What is that? Infantry rush? Hal Halvody rush? Yeah, well, they're not doing too great of a job to damage Teuton Siege Rangers. Um, they would do a better job with every other Siege Ranger, but this is a Teuton Siege Ranger, so it gets uh, Ironclad, which makes it more resistant to melee attacks. Uh, check that people don't talk about that often, but here it came, came in, uh, importantly, saved ASO. Oh, that looks like trouble for Mr. Shing once again. Um, castle not going up, but the village is still working on it, and camels and cavalchers are dealing with that. Maybe camel cavalchers are saving him here, even. I mean, Timian, it's a good move. Um, I'm not sure. I think Semi Clump would be fine, but the Siege Rangers out that quickly from lakes can stop the castles, and that's actually what's happening. And that is big trouble for Shing, so it's completely right to signal this one here. I just feel like with the roster of Peon, Lurks and Lakes, there's not many teams in DM overall that can be those three when they play together. Um, also three really good team game players, right? They are good 1v1 players. Or really good 1v1 players. I mean, Lurks definitely at the like, top 20. One one as well, but I think they're all all three of them are also even better at team games than at one ones. I think Unique has a good shot at winning a tournament. I don't quite understand why Unique having these three players is a lower seed than the family. Um 
But no, I didn't do the city. AOKD! What up, my man? We're watching Unique Destroy 777? At least in game one. I wouldn't say game one was that lopsided, but this feels more lopsided. Shing is very dead here. Um, do we even still have a villager? No villagers? Okay, Shing is dead. I think that's a very troublesome situation for Team 777. Lobby's Mayans also not really that equipped to deal with a Korean push. Um, especially if it's supported by Lithuanian Paladins that have already gathered two relics. And yeah, that was a quick one. Um, X-Factor for once not losing his muscles on the bat. And 2-0 for the Franco-Canadian US-American team. But I don't think Prism will play today. It's uh, really early um, for her times. It's Sunday, but I don't think... Maybe I don't think she's home. Um, to play. No need for Will, still got this. Uh, they disagreed. And welcome Paglima, welcome KD. Nice to see so many people in the chat that I appreciate a lot. Yeah, amazing KD here. Um, haven't looked at his side too much because he kind of lost the who kills quicker competition against um, Lakes. Uh, he also got the tier starting TC. To be fair, but like Lakes completely killed this guy, so so Lake won against Peon here. Um, I know that's not a fair comparison and anything. And it's a bit mean to Team Seven Seven Seven, but just the sieves were much better. And uh, these three in combination are are hard to break, I think. For I think, yeah. Let, let I want to see like look at the ELOs of them to see if Seven Seven is like the the B team kind of China. 1500, okay, plus 18 team games. Lobby, I've seen him before. Bai has only played Hong Guy friend. Hmm. Is that a pro Hong Kong statement? I shouldn't talk about that. Um, 1800 for Shing. Okay, no, never mind. I think they're quite, quite um, same level as Team 666. But it's just like Unique's probably a stronger team. Than uh, Real Team 1? No. Unique is a stronger team than Real Team 1 that we saw yesterday. What best of this? Um, best of 7. Potato dude. Welcome, my man. You can see to the left side of the screen. You can see the settings. And yeah, I think I'm gonna make a coffee. I promise to get the competition music on. So, well, X Factor 1 is bad. So I'll turn up the music really loud and make myself a coffee and then we're going to be back with game 3 and uh, the person who correctly guesses the game that this is the soundtrack of will get 500 muscles. Be right back.
Hey, yo, I'm back, and we have some guesses. Extractor is guessing it's coffee. He's gonna get coffee too. That's respectable. And Blaska says he knows it. Someone made me listen to this a week ago, but he didn't type the answer in the chat. Um, Extractor said Game of Thrones German edition. And um, Fuyo is what we say to that, because you got it right. It is Oblivion, or the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. So, yeah, so you're gonna get add points to. Yeah, you didn't type it though. You, you have to not only say that you know it, why don't you give someone else some others? Okay, that's true. Uh, I have to add a number. How do I write you? Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do it in the in the menu here. Who here can find you earlier easier? No. Mm. Uh, you don't show up here. Maybe I have to follow so I can see you, so you can get your prize. Because you don't show up in the lawyers of this, do you? Oh, that, that, that should work, and thanks for the follow. I know I kind of baited this out of you. Okay, we have a game code as well. Um, you, you're gonna get your muscles. Um, It is all right. There we go. That should have worked, and I think they're in. So I posted a game code. Um. Showing up just yet. Is the number complete? Pian sent me a different one. Hmm. And Pian's one is like Lombardia! Okay, a map that we haven't seen before. Let's get in! And now we have 500 more muscle seals on the betting, Mr. Fulo. Fulo. Is that an L or too low, right? That'd be right. But for you, it sounds so much better. Um, okay, the soundtrack can go. Bats are open. Change the scene. And here we are into game three on Lombardia. Let's see if Keen777 can bring it back here. They And let's start with them for once. Um, we have Portuguese for Lobby yet again and then on the pocket, but we're kind of all pockets, there is Teutons and Cumans. Okay, so that was kind of closer to what they did in the first game. Cumans seems an odd pick for Lombardia because, well, it's not the map where you can rush, right? But then again, it's not like Ching is playing humans like a rushing so for these two early castles. Uh, it's doing the same thing as he did on Ghost Lake. Um, uh, on Ghost Lake, on, on Oasis. I think he just likes cave checks, maybe? I was caught up by an elephant here. We have Khmer for Peon, um, Magyars for Lyrics, and Bulgarians for Lakes. So once again, we see Lakes, Peon, and Lyrics here. Um, not, not, not letting them have a chance, <laughs> really. Um, that's a turn of it. That is a prize pool, so uh, I can understand. Oh, Lurks coming in with the cab archers from the Magyars. Uh, we'll get three will picks here. That's already quite some damage done to Mr. Lung. Um, not the fanciest Lombardia generation, we have super clear-cut corners for both teams. So this could go on for quite a while. Um, yeah, Sayan says it's the wrong one. Alright, um, again an early market for Lung here. Let's, let's check who's got the market here. Um, it was actually Lung. 
getting 1.5k. And that's unusual, right? Usually when we watched Winter's War, it was always, always Lakes or Lurks getting the market. <laughs> so I guess it's good to take that away from them. Uh, but I'm not sure how important the market is on Lombardia. You can get gold pretty easily. Um, there's no early deaths, so you don't need that early army as much. And you might run into some space problems for food and this map can go down to wood a lot. So yeah, um, probably Lombardia is the map you least want to market on. Um, we have some fortified walls now coming up in comparison to Winter's War in this team game tournament. Um, walls are, stone walls are allowed, gates are banned and bomber towers are banned. Um, some push coming in the south there from lyrics but i think we can still hold that off well useless mm, why I don't, I don't mind this wall it's a short wall to protect that and so they have to go through here where as a hill i want to see a castle on from long long pop cat at 60 and it's down to eight villages camera just did quite some damage there and yeah, full on map control for Team Unique here. Some Elfins trying to raid it aside, but good reaction by Shing to send some uh, Habitus after that. And whoa, whoa, these Cavatches were in quite some danger. Why are we chasing down SO with Cavatches? Lyric suicidal Cavatches, but um, SO are more interested in taking down the Khmer Scorpions and more worried about that than about the Mega Cavatches, which might be a mistake. They seem quite dangerous. I was sniping some Bombard Cannons here. That is a lot of value they're, they're getting, sniping these bombard cannons from the Portuguese player. Um, the walls are going up. Is that? No, there's no hole, I think. Yeah. Oh no, this is closed. You can close this, but I mean, at least there's a castle, right? Is it Fuyo or is it Fulo? Or is it something entirely different? Probably something entirely different. I see Konix coming in here um, and, and they have to go through the house because of that wall. I, I still don't really mind that wall too much. I mean, I usually mind walls, right? I hate walls. <laughs> I hate playing against walls. Plus, well, I'm not sure. Like you can always speak things otherwise, but yeah. if he's not answering himself, I don't want to talk about him. Like he might get uncomfortable, or 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 she. Hey, upside by the way. Well, the Konics are making inroads here. I mean, the thing with Konics against Harbadiers is that when they die, they basically become a champion. So then they just lose their first life and and win their second life. Um, that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing a lot of dismounted Konics. Um, because they're fighting Halberdiers, so that happens quite a lot. Um, yeah, good job by them holding the right side though. Also, the Shin with the Cumans, which is not the strongest Sif after the start in my opinion. But they have tools, right? Kipchaks aren't too bad of units, Siege Ranger is still good. Um, and we don't have any SO out too much on the other side. Um, Lakes could technically make some, the other Sifs don't have one, but Lakes is focusing on the Conic line here. Hmm. Which does have the mobility, right? Um, at least before they have to dismount after fighting how it is. That seems quite fair. Ram train now coming from the Khmer without any scorpions to support, because they're getting down, taken down by Shing here. I really like what Shing's doing in this game. I think he's playing really, really strong, pushing Peon back at the right side. Two castles, there are still obstacles in the way. Um, but now, yeah, they're switching to the middle with the Magia supporting there. And some Conics made it into. Oh no, that's just Shing straight cards. Um, I'm so unused to seeing Shing actually trade. Because he never got trade up in the last two games. Um, but yeah, this seems like he is his game where he, he's doing the best out of his team. Problem is a bit long in the middle now with the middle push here from Unique. In some trouble. And Paladin still some habitiers from low BR. Cleaning that push up. 
Alright, I think this is a... I think this is gonna be the longer... The longest game we've seen so far. Well, X not completely switched to the southern front. Um, I guess to snipe all the ESO. And indeed, I don't see the ESO anymore. So I think he was pretty successful with that. Um, yeah, I really like, like the thoughts of like Unique. You can see that they're thinking of stuff. Like we attack there, then we double there. Then blue from the top comes over to the south because there's ESO. Um, you can see they have great team, team chemistry and team communication there for Unique. And I think that's something that can carry them really far in the tournament. Um, and something that's probably more important than 1v1 skill, in a way, right? You need the one base 1v1 skill. Um, but after that, like, especially... Kinda even more for deathmatch, because you kinda have to coordinate from, from minute one on. Or from minute zero. I guess minute zero is only a logical second, but... Um, you know what I mean. Um, it's even more important in team deathmatch. Now, uh, Lex now with a big raid on the trade. Did make it through the holes in the wall. Um, and that last spells trouble. Um, so I'm signaling on the right, Belista Elephants from Peon. Like, he just signaled that to show me that there's Belista Elephants on the field. Right? Or maybe he meant the Doubtcastle he built. I wanted some support there. But, yeah, I don't think we need the bottom right now. We, we're cutting off the trade at the top. Um, there's more markets here, so the trade can go here instead of there. Um, but yeah, Codex are uh, very good against organ guns, it seems, and Halberdians aren't doing too much. Yeah, for, yeah, not. For games, it'll be kind of doing kind of good against Portuguese. Ramparty Lakes? Um. Maybe, yeah, that might be, might be coming. Yeah, there's Rams, but he's too pop capped, and, and the Rams in the middle have done quite some work as well. So Ram party peon as well, um, push back massively into into Long's base here in the middle. Uh, some Scorpions are dying to the castle there, and um, yeah, Ching doing a really good job at holding off the Khmer at the right, but the Khmer just switched to the middle, and with support from the Magyar player, making big inroads here in the middle while uh, Lex is just picking off everything at the left side. Or oh, well, wasting into the castle because he wants to get the rams out. Um, or just wasting into the castles and getting rams out. I don't know if there's a logical connection. He thought about that. Kipchaks against Magia Kevacha. Another interesting interesting thing to think about. What do you guys say? How, how, okay, we can kind of watch it. But if you guys in chat have opinions of Mega Kevachas versus Kipchex, or somebody watched the Spirit of the Law video or something on that, uh, would be interested. Yes, Kipchex should do better. Like, we have 5 plus 3, but we have multiple arrows, so we have kind of multiple 8 attack. And yeah, they have more HP. Mega Cavage, yeah, but all other characters? Like, I don't think Mega Cavage is winning against Elephant Archers, right? So, that statement clearly doesn't count unique units. And I, don't, I would also would assume that War Wagons should beat them. Blue map? Yeah, like, like they made so much happen at the right as well, that nobody was really helping Lobby contesting the left side. I guess Lung's trying now, but... He has a Teuton Castle up there, that's certainly helping, and I don't think he will end up denying that crap post with only one ETK though. Big story also that thing here, um, but yeah, still a few castles in front of the trade, and oh, Pion did get his uh, former Dark Castle up, and is making big unroads on the right as well. And I was wrong, game one was actually longer than game three, by two minutes. Yeah, really well played by, by Unique. Um, 
Um, yeah, I, a bit sad that we will probably won't see a closed series here, but uh, also a bit lucky that it's not a four-hour cost again. <laughs> oh, but yesterday was draining, man. But um, but it was a great series. Um, I enjoyed the games a lot. Uh, it was just like my physical circumstances were not getting better during the series. <laughs> Um, yeah, well played by, by Peon, Peon Sneaky, uh, well played by, by all of uh, Unique really, but also well played of Shing. I think he made a lot happen with uh, with Cubans, a lot more than I expected, like from his build order and from playing Cubans on Lombardia. Um, really have to give some, some credit, um, or actually a lot of credit to Shing in this game. Um, also considering he had kind of a rough time and rough Civ matchups in, in the last two. Um, yeah, well played. But it's 3 0, so match point time for Unique. Time to get the Living music up again. I also saw some sling towards legs from Lyrics, actually. I assume that's food because he mainly went Cab Um KD. You can see it here. Um, Cheng did pretty well. Uh, for eco KD with humans. Or relics captured by lyrics, even like you're not playing with your aliens this time, lyrics, but nice job. Yeah, uh, and that was game three. That isn't even music. I I'm gonna find a new soundtrack so so we can do another guessing game. What could we do? Okay, that should be a funny one. If that's actually here. This. That's probably gonna be a quick one. Um. Shoot the guesses. And we have a game code. So just if anybody see it wasn't here before, this is a game soundtrack. You can guess which game it is for and you'll get 500 Russell. Oh, never mind. We will have to postpone that because they're already in game four. And it's Oasis yet again. Like I said, you don't know this one? I was expecting you to know this one as well. Um, yeah, but, but we're into the next game. I completely forgot about the bets. Unique one, so the travel's correct. And the bets are up once again. And we're in game four on Oasis for the second time. Um, who is actually the one picking this now? Game four, team that is behind after the first three games. Okay, makes sense that it was uh, team 777 picking that. So we have Lithuanian Pocket for Unique um, on the right flank. Pion playing as a Cuban, so they're going Cubans themselves now and Koreans for Lakes on this side. Celts, okay, nice serve there for Lobby in my opinion. And Spanish pocket, completely different sis here, and uh, fall playing the Koreans. All for you? No. So, yeah, Shing not, uh, Shing, like, Lang not playing this one. And we have to say M3 for Unique again. It's like a really rough start for... Faldo, Cumans from Pion, showing how Cumans should be played. Oasis is in the map, pool potato dude, indeed. And we've seen a lot of Oasis in this turn. I think it's probably, like, the series yesterday, we only saw Oasis Arabia, Oasis Arabia, because one team always picked Arabia, and the other team always picked Oasis. You can repeat the map, so. We only say Arabia and Oasis, uh, Oasis yesterday. You know, we'll see 
Pion, Step Lancers, being kind of ruthless with the villagers so far. We're down to two villagers here. What's happening on the other side? Um, some Koreans coming forward, but the Celts are building up. Could potentially make a lot happen later on. A potato dude coming. Betting on Unique. You can probably win a lot if somebody considers betting on 777. Um. But it does look rough for Mr. Fall as the Korean player for this team. Three villages out. He has some sneaky house builders. They were also picked off. And Ching now scrambling over with the Spanish Paladins. That should do a good job of cleaning this up. Let's see the battle in the south. Siege Andra from Koreans against Siege Andra from Kals. Kals versus Koreans, pretty even matchup. Um, you have more range here and more HP here. And faster fire rate here, so yeah, Koreans one of the suits that can like can hold to par with the ESO of the other side. Um, if they have meet it in front. But yeah, Kels probably best SO in the game. Um Kels, Koreans or Mongols, depending on the situation. And Pia now doing the paladin switch, and yeah, the Koreans in the north will have a hard time building up, but somewhat stabilized by the help of Shing. And Kels are the Sith that can hold on their own. World Raiders now coming in. Should do well against the not fully upgraded Korean champions. Um, but the Ram push, I'm not too sure. There's so many SO left. SO lacking behind a bit for Lobi. I don't really get the Scorpion edition. I think just dies too quickly to see to just there. But well, he managed to kill or deny one castle. So that isn't too bad now. Lyrics coming in to support though. Where's the relic situation at? Plus six. So he has two relics. Um, and should be able to grab this one here as well. So that will be plus three. Additional plus three soon. But Spanish doing a good job holding here. Xing once again playing a really strong game with Paladins and. Um, what's that called? Conquistadors. And yeah, push now from Lobi. Push off from Lobby, I think maybe this is the game that 777 finds their way back into the series. I mean, if Falk can stabilize, Lobby and Ching are doing a great job here, but uh, well, let's see. Eric can also still make a lot happen. Has to be on two fronts, though, making pardons here as well. And uh, Lake's kind of falling off against uh, Kelts here. Maybe overextended a bit. Go, did go too far forward on that hill. Should have just focused on securing this position, in my opinion, and lost a lot there without having really the siege numbers. And now Lobi is making inroads into his base. More castles under the hill, like anywhere where we can build them, scrambling them up. Um, I guess there's three golds there. Also three castles. Um, in the north, uh, well, starting to see still up for fall, and 50 population isn't where we really want to be. And still only 19 villagers. Um, where's the pop? But only 66 pops for Lake on the other side. This is really close, guys. Now Lyrics is there to clean up the south, but that means Lyrics is not at the top, and that means fall. And Shin can push up top. Um, some two human castles in the way. Don't have Bracer. Oh, HP are okay, 6300, but like Green Castle has less actually. Oh, I expected Green Castle to be better. <laughs> Surprised. Spanish castles are better though. 7k. So people can repeat this here. Yeah, not in a team, but in a series. Like you can't have two Lithuanian players. Because every player drafts a Sif at the, kind of makes a Sif draft at the start of the tournament. And only gets like five Sifs. But they can repeat them in a series. But there's two bands for the, for each team on each player. So each player has five Sifs for a whole tournament and gets two banned each game individually. That's why it also takes a bit longer to set up the mattress here. Um, yeah, Ching 
The castles are, are dropping in the north. Koreans have gotten to their death wall actually. Not too much eco behind it, but still really nice resources they are pushing, and he has got army out. Together with sea tramps and conquistadors and halberdiers from the Spanish player. What do I not see more paladins? You're, it's like not like you're against camels, right? Like, yeah, humans get camels, but they're only regular camels. Um, yeah, Lobby has also secured the trade corner now, so yeah, we are we seeing pretty good trade up by seven seven seven, and the trade actually from Unique is in danger. Oh damn! Should have looked at the sieves before betting, maybe. Just thinking, oh, Unique's got a clear stomp here, right? But, but no, 777 don't want Unique to clear stomp. They're coming back hot in this one. And even though Start looked really rough for Fall, he's he gotten up to where they needed to be. Yes, Sea Drivers, War Wagons, Traps, which might be in danger against these Paladins. That's why I said, like, yeah, don't need some Paladins out to counter that. And just one Paladin with 5 HP isn't probably not gonna cut it. Some Saves might fall here. War Wagons, not the greatest units against Paladins if it's like equal numbers. Um, and the Kongs should really clear that up. Why are we trying to fight the Sea Drone just instead of clearing that up? <coughs> but overall, the army is still not looking too shabby for 777 here. And as long as Lobi can hold the trade in the south. Scary Korean army, though, also coming out for Lakes now. Um, Lakes at 188 pop and also 180 pop for Shing. So the Koreans are stepping up their game and some heavier raids there. In between the markets, killing a trade card. Um, and now this is kind of a race, right? We have this race for the corner, and you have... Well, this is not a race anymore. A really nice shot from Lobby there. Um, yeah, so, I think Lurix should... Yeah, he's coming over to defend the trade in the north now. But, yeah. Really good job here. Kind of showing why humans may have not been the best pick for 7-7 before. It's over days. Yeah, also Spanish trade, right? But we're still holding on. Lyrics patterns are doing quite a good job at partially cleaning here. And the South is trying to make something happen. And he's pretty close to the trade as well. I have to say that if that castle goes up, Sea Drunters are killing quite some villagers there though. Um, but we don't have anything. Do we have traps out? No, we don't have anything to clear that castle really. And that's gonna be a lot of dead siege to the castle fire and to the fire of the siege run just behind with the extra range. Oh, I think Unique might edge it out here. That's looking really good what Lex is doing here. Uh, we see Lex doing amazing with siege run just also in the show match. Uh, Unique versus the family. Bombard cannons now up in the north, also killing a castle, but we don't have too much to protect them, so they should fall to Peon's paladins here, and that will give another life to them. While what is that castle? No way! Overconfidence castle by lakes, and, and all the villages are gone, maybe because they try to build that? Well, that's not one HP. I think he just got shot by by a so there, and now Peon has to scramble up a castle here. Trade is kind of open. There's some paladins there being annoying, but we could move the war wagons into the trade then. And I think this might be the game that 777 takes if like they can hold this here longer than they need to get into the trade here. But I think they're closer now, and if they don't make a bomber tower, of course. Um, but we do have three bomber cans out. Yes, yeah, looking looking quite good for 
for peon there. Um, no, hey, not not for peon. Now uh, they managed to push him back. These castles are up. So yeah, it was good from peon. There was a lot of bombard cans lost. I think I prefer to see in traps, because like against lyrics and peon, these bombard cans just get sniped a lot. And now Lakes looks better again, has another strong army out, but not too much units to protect him, counting on kind of lyrics to spam the paladins in front. But the paladins are getting into the trade now. Oh god, I so much wanted to see 777 take a game here, guys. But I start feeling like it's not happening, it was so close. But I, th I think like, even like losing 4-0 to Unique, I think 777 have a good chance of winning some games in the tournament. Like, I think they can go par to par with the two teams we saw yesterday, for example. I think just Unique might be on a bit of a different level than the three teams we've seen in the tournament so far. But yeah, I'm not calling this yet. They actually pushed this back here, but that position seems like super dangerous. It's also a hill to push towards the trade there for Lyrics. And uh, here they managed to take the hill defensively still. The trade cards are kind of running in front of the battle. Not as badly as we've seen yesterday, but um, they're so in reach. And like, oh, this feels so bad. Like, you can see the trade. And it feels like in your grasp, but you can't reach it by like one centimeter. Tantalus, right, is the guy in mythology for that. Did we really playing AV2, not AOM? I mean, I would probably play AOM if they make a definitive edition. I think it would be great if they make a definitive edition of AOM. I really enjoyed playing the campaigns back in the day of AOM. Um, never really played it in multiplayer. But like the gods and everything, it's so cool. I think they had some balancing problems, but... Yeah, the campaigns were... I also played a lot of the AU2 campaigns when, when I was a kid, right? And they kind of made me interested in history. Um, but the AOM campaigns... I mean, they were arguably, even though my life was probably influenced more by the AU2 campaigns, the AOM campaigns are... Like, storytelling-wise, they are far superior. Um, like, the campaign levels of AV, at least like the first ones, aren't too well designed. But, um, like the, the lore around it, like the videos, they were, they were so great with the voices. Um, yeah, now, now we're in the trade here for lyrics, but there's Korean Towers coming up, good job. And now Shing has, is finally coming over, it took quite a while to come over here. Now doing a really good job at cleaning this one up, but on the other hand side, Pion is also pushing back and securing the trade, even with watchtowers from the Cubans. This thing's not doing any damage, my man. Well, I guess it's something that traps can fire at and miss. But that was deathmatch in the AM as well, but it's done through the Dark Age, really. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like a lot of militia. I can't remember what the Dark Age units were in, in AOM. I haven't played it in like 20 years, right? 15 years, right? Uh, sea Drone just have to fight under the hill and they're fighting a mining camp. Um, now, Lobi coming here. Wait, what happened to Lobi? Is that his only base? Well, I guess we only need wood, right? I'm low on villagers, but it's 73 wills. That actually isn't too bad. But we have a lot of idols. They were mining something. I think you should need send those to wood. And he doesn't have much trade either. Three on gold. What? Were there raids or did he just not make eco? Watch draw in a tree. Yeah, same for me with the AOM. The <laughs> Potato shit. 
Yeah, uh, Dream didn't even sign up, which I think they lacked the player numbers. Former Dream signed up, like Tito Packer made a team, right? Los Descrepitos. Tito Packer's team, they're playing tonight. I might actually cast that, it's midnight for me, but... Legend signed up for the 2v2 but lost in first round. Who did he play with? I mean losing in first round, I also lost in first round, right? I got Nikov and Ashley. Um, so like they probably got really uh, high skill players. So it's not really shameful to lose in, in the first round in that one. Signed up with some guys not in Dream Clan. Yeah, I think he's the only member, right? But who did they play against? I mean, if they played like Dilly and Shine, okay, obviously. Um, well, are we actually getting a castle back up here? So they, that's, this trade is defended and this trade is defended. And we have officially reached the longest game of the set so far. Um, Seedrams. Yeah, it's... Pion's got like... Kind of ultimate army from... From the Cuban side, and it's interesting not to see him play Kip Tracks, which does make sense against so many SO. Um, I, I like the choice of not going for Kip Tracks, but it's unusual because, like, um, we see a lot of people going Kip Tracks, and 777 have continued playing Kip Tracks very heavily when they play Cumans. Um, but yeah, nice job of 777 defending, like, the south. There comes a new attack on the south while Peon is still cleaning up house in the north. Uh, Xing now there to contest that, but I don't think this castle will be prevented. And that means the all the hills that are securing the trade here for Unique are, are down. And they delayed some markets to make the trade nicer. Nice move there. Let's see how nice their trade is. A little bit of wood blocking here. That's a lot of trade. Wow. Whoa, look at that. Okay, this needs to be delayed in. Um, there's so much trade that my bullies keep flickering. Like, the trade cards are even deleting Lurik's starting base here, which which he should do, probably. He has st more stables here. He doesn't really need these stables. I think he should delete these stables. But, uh... Wood control! No way! No wood control on the aces, please! 25k trade profit for Lurik's. 10k only for Lakes. Um, and uh, Peon has 21k. So, wow. Now, yeah, but also 22k. For fall actually, uh, Lobby has kind of no trade, and Shing has 11k. I've had to fight over uh, wood control and races much before it was hurt. What? In 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 four v four? Which in which team thing? No, I mean the team two v two named wood control. Ah, they they played against wood control. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean that's Kenna and Django, right? That's also. Really strong, Keller's really good, and he's really good at telling Django what to do. <laughs> uh, normally I'm only making fun of Django when he's in the chat, or, well, I guess when I'm in his chat I make even more fun of him, but... Uh, yeah. Scorpions again, dude, I don't get that, like, you're still playing HD or Wubbly. Scorpions are not a thing when there's a soul around anymore, you can... You can patrol a soul now. Just a big change. Yeah, Pion doing a good job, so that trade is secure. And um, that trade, we're killing the markets! Really? The markets are only 175 wood and a bit of attention. Trade cards are where the meat's at. But I guess it disrupts the train, and oh yeah, now the war wagons are here. Lakes going for war wagons and sneaking them up there. War wagons are really nice. Uh, like they can hold castle fire and shit. Not that there would be a castle around. Um, there's just some um, hussars. Oh, hussars is not a good sign. Hussars is a sign that this team is out of gold. No, like actually, oh, that was Lakes. Yeah, Lakes isn't out of gold. Yeah, kind of bit out of gold here for yellow, red as well. Never really adding trade, and yeah, now. Oh, the trade is idle for Fal, who's been the one that had the massive trade um, on their side. But they did clean it up. 
Oh, Farmer remembered to resend his trade cards, and he is in part. Yeah, okay, there we go. But he's being pushed up north. Um, once again, quite the start of the game. We're back to the start, right? We started here with uh, Puffer being pushed, then we made it all the way up to here, kind of. Almost in the trade. And now we're back to square one. Feels bad. But, but we're holding south. I mean, our trade is also secure for 777, because I'm kind of rooting for 777 to get a game here. Um. For v four was the wood control game. That makes sense, I think. There was probably also a lot of Koreans and like good heavy saves involved. Class Koreans, something like that. I mean, yesterday we saw somebody making ships in the pond to deny a wood line. That's how far we got yesterday to word control. I mean, in which was obviously a super close series, right? It took seven hours, uh, seven hours now, four hours. And it was 4 3. Yeah, I mean, that's good, right? If you fight 4v4 uh, where everybody's Burgundians. And it goes down to wood control, you would probably still sitting here tomorrow. Oh yo 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 that that hello mace. I didn't know that Lobby was actually mace. I'm glad to see Mace playing in a tournament here. Yeah? There's only one way to find out. I will not cast it. Mojito wanted to do um, more creative show matches, right? Maybe you should pitch the idea to Mojito. I mean, it is somewhat of a Mace. <laughs> One open trade, yeah. I remember that ghost lag game that we played. I don't know, I think you maybe was... Uh, I, I'm not sure if you were in it as well. But I was on against Mace on my side, I think. And he made like... This is only three layers of wall. He made like eight layers of wall. Um, and it went down to wood control. And they didn't have any wood left. And... My teammates didn't have any, it was a 3-3, my teammates also didn't have any wood left. And I was like Saracens. And I had 30k wood in the bank. <laughs> it was just like, the other teammates were involved for begging me for like wood. And I was like, okay, okay, I can give you 500, but like, use it wisely. Uh, and I was being pushed and shit, but we ended up winning because I had that wood bank. And I narrowly saved the trade on my side like a lot of times. Sounds like good old base. Yeah, it was the really walling days. Uh, this castle was... We've seen it a lot on our new Oasis yesterday as well. Um, so many castles in one place. I mean, you don't even need to really move the traps to kill them. That's that's why I'm really unsure about that. But yeah, I guess it takes quite a while to do to go through it. And we have stone walls around it. Um, but... It sounds like they had a good chance of winning condition here. But now... What's their winning condition? Right? We're walling up this side and castling up this. We're triple walling this side. Um, but how are we ever gonna get here? Or here? And that's a lot of trade. Like you could just stream this and it would be like looking at a, at a big alleyway from like a skyscraper. Intelligence versus castles. Not too sure about that lyrics. 
should just wait for the traps to do the work, but the traps somehow died. That's exposed eco if I've ever seen it. Yeah, yeah there's no castles in the trade. Like, there's only castles in the corner that was pushed. And there's no castles here. And there's also no castles on the way, really. That's also a lot of exposed eco. But, like, the only thing that 777 are seeing, defend our trade wall up. And, oh, there's castles here. Like, if they go past these castles, like, it's... it's like, 400 free villagers. And, and lots of free trade cards. Sad thing is, I don't think 777 will attempt to raid. But I hope I'm wrong. Their trade? And the castle here. Also exposed here. I mean, that's also a lot of exposed acre here, to be fair. Just nobody thinks about raiding on Oasis. I mean, they have the stone walls, right? So you have to go through this here. And then there's also a castle here and get some wall protection there. So you need to go through more castles. So I think actually like the Eco is better protected by Shing, uh, by, by 777, just counting from the entry roads. And the other one is here in the sea dungeon, so you also can't really go through there. I mean, they, they broke the walls. Um, but this is not the Eco, right? Um, what is that? Teal? Teal isn't even playing. How do I see Teal on the minimap? There's probably green and blue overlapping. Oh, we have a raid! Peon is raiding! But I wanted to see a raid from 777. I don't think we'll see that though. I wish. I wish. I wish. Ching would start raiding. That's the population it. Still pretty full. The lowest is actually for low B. Which doesn't make sense name-wise. Um, but yeah, push the south back once again. Fall even coming over with Korean Asona now to support the Keltiso. Like, Keltiso aren't good enough with the Korean Asona here now. Um, but yeah, what we really would need is protection for our SO. And there's a few halberdiers, but that's it. We're kind of trying to see tram push against Koreans. Don't think that's a thing. Like, the ramps can sometimes get close to sea dodges and take them down because of minimum range. Well, guess what? Korean SO basically don't have minimum range. They have one time minimum range to order not make them shoot themselves. So they basically have no minimum range. Oh. Or at least the... Uh, it wouldn't be reasonable at all. They have completely no... Uh, Lobi now with Kelp Paladins? You have perfectly upgraded Spanish Paladins in your team. That's 8 now on Lyrics Paladins, by the way. I missed that. He got 4 relics. So that makes his base even more perfectly upgraded. Oh, that was some nice shots there. Quite a lot of Paladin died to those as our shots. I'm getting a bit tired. I might get an energy drink. Um. This is definitely a long one, one hour. Um, I would have preferred the series to be prolonged in the way that 777 killed this and win. But I guess, like, they get to play a game out, it's kinda nice. I don't see their, like, road to victory, sadly. I mean, yeah, I see their road to victory, probably raiding. Um, as Potato Dude pointed out to me very rightfully, but... If that will happen, there we go. The paladin, no way! Like, it's kind of the worst thing when you're trying to dive onto the sea challengers and then you go back and they haven't actually focused fired. So they would have just fired behind you and missed you all, but you chose to go back and then you run into the shots. That always feels so frustrating. You have another, another massive maze ball. That's also actually also fortified words. Like, how is that the same HP than this one? 
Like this one looks so much stronger than that one, no? I mean that one has even like cracks in the wall and everything. That looks like bah. There's a paladin in there. Lord, he trapped the paladin! Good job, Loki. And like his teammate might shoot him. <laughs> oh, what's going on there? Oh, uh, the trade raid by Peon. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sadly, Unique found the exposed trade before. Before they found the explosiveness of that. But I want to see what happens to the paladin. Oh, it's here. It's here. It's here. It's losing HP. It's losing. Oh, yeah, we're firing at this one. 73 HP. I think he will die in captivity. Oh, he's not actually captured anymore. Oh, he left. He left. The paladin lives. The paladin lives to die another day. Isn't that beautiful? And he joins his friends. And they're like, oh, where have you been, girls? And they send him to heal! God! Lyrics! You're such a nice person! You rescued that pellet, and that was sure was gonna get shot by legs. And then you even sent him in the, in the castle to heal. Lovely. Uh, guys, do you want me to cast the game? Or just cast what this pellet does? <laughs> I mean, his friends are, are fighting. He did his part. And actually, he's living longer than his friends, possibly. While his friends might be winning the game here. <laughs> let me let me clear. I have that castle clicked so I can see that. Trades are being delayed. Um, yeah, I have him here. Like, we're gonna see when he leaves. Um, if I miss this, tell me that he left. And I'm just gonna like look at the rest and not try to click anything. So we know what the paladin is doing. Um, but yeah, markets were, were killed. There's a new market here, so it isn't too bad. But like the friends of our paladin are chasing that one. Um, in the north, so much free area, so much free space. I haven't seen that in quite a while in this game. Um, all the castles here were cleared. And um, yeah, but, like, fishing a trade is super hard here. And now, like, the friends of our paladin are taking down a castle. They're, they're running around in the trade. They found a big food eco as well. Um, I feel like the fat lady is starting to sing. Um, or at least she's doing like... Hmm, I don't know how to say that in English. Like what your, the orchestra does before it starts to play the actual... My musical knowledge is shit in English. You want that to do the actual thing, okay? And it's still in uh, the castle. And I mean, Ching's doing a good job of cleaning those paladins up, but these guys are still alive. And we have the Kals not. I don't think World Raiders. Okay, it's a mix of worlds and, and how it is. I think that's a fair game, but they were gonna die. And now we have, like, Lakes castling the trade, and I think he's forgotten about our guy. Oh, like, both have forgotten about it, I guess, because it's in Lakes castle, but it's like, lyrics paladin. I really hope they use it again. I mean, what, how's the trade at? Uh, is it going here only? Is it idle? Uh, it looks quite damaged. I think that's really bad news for them. And now there's another push by Peon with the own Paladin up north. Uh, Lyrics army. Well, he's raiding. And, but the most important part of Lyrics army is... Uh, Yeah, that's more trade rates. Really nice position for those paladins. I don't think like he's caught it. And they are resigning without the paladin having done anything again. I'm disappointed. GG's. What a close game. Really, really good performance by 777 in this one. I 
thought they had it and we uh, would have a bit of a comeback but yeah Pion and Lurix narrowly defended the trade up north and uh, ended up finally pushing this one but yeah GG really really good one here and yeah very fun to cast series kind of thankful it didn't take four hours um yeah and unique's just with really really strong and promising performance for the rest of the tournament I have to say um let me add the scoreboard then look at the statistics and then we're gonna take a look at the brackets um yeah yeah right uh, how late is it it's only one and a half hours, and yeah, I'm maybe gonna play one or two games before I get back to reading stuff for my job. Um, Shing with the most food collected from the Spanish, um, not too far off from lyrics. Trade profit figure for unique 85k trade for lyrics, 73k for peon, and the next runner up is Fall with uh, 64. Um, Lakes also got 64 and Lobi and Shing kind of low on trade and that is counting that like the um, 777 team had Spanish trade so they had actually better trade cards than um, the, the unique team. Lyrics got the four relics which also brought in quite some gold and here you can see the timeline. Um, Fall almost dying at the start but then almost killing uh, the opponent's trade. Really well played by him. Um, and bashing, like I really liked what Ching did in the game as well, um, running everywhere. Uh, Lobby did a good hold at the start, but I think he lacked a bit in eco development. Um, but yeah, holding like that against Lakes is uh, nothing to be ashamed of. Um, so yeah, we're really good opponents, um, and this score doesn't really reflect how close the last game was at least. <laughs> 